Even unarmed against a gunman, if you can control the distance, you've got hope. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, as always, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Washington, D.C. Everyone should have a less lethal tool on their person in this day and age, and the one that I carry, give to my family, and recommend to everyone is Palm OC. Hit the link in the description and you can get one for you and yours as well. These are our two perps, one male, one female, who walk into this convenience store and I'm pretty sure they're just looking for somebody to rob because our dude here, who is our victim at the bottom of the screen, doesn't react to them at all. He's not like worried about them. I don't think this is a personal beef at all. But watch what goes down. Dude's gonna walk by, hey, excuse me, man, and he's looking at his phone. Now our dude's gonna run back, stick a gun in his face and say, give me your phone. Now our guy's gonna, gonna uh, reply back or like try to fight him off and our bad guy actually shoots him in the leg and then they run off. Took several months for DCPD to catch that guy, but they did, and he's facing several charges of assault with a deadly weapon. The victim was transported to the hospital and is was expected to make a full recovery the last update that I saw that is linked in the description. Well, that was pretty interesting. If you want to support the work we do here at Active Self Protection, would you think about joining our patron member program? At the gold level, you even get access to every single month's online seminar of deep dives into self-defense topics. So hit the link in the description, go over to my website and consider supporting the work that you do. We would really appreciate it. Let's remember the criminals don't think like we do. These guys are just going to walk into some random convenience store and go, hey, let's just hold somebody up at the convenience store, which of course is not what a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person would ever do. So the biggest thing here, remember, it, criminals do not think like you do. Do not expect them to live by your morals. You have to be ready to protect yourself and recognize when somebody is willing to victimize someone else, what that means about them. Okay, fine. Now they're coming in and again, just looking for an opportunity and our dude here, I think there's a couple of reasons why he was probably chosen. Number one, Close proximity, I don't think he can really do anything about that. But number two, he's got his phone out and in his hand. Now, I get it, we use our mobile devices a lot, I use mine as well, but when you're in a public place, I can't tell you enough, best thing to do is stick your phone in your pocket. That is a high dollar item. Even the cheaper ones now are worth several hundred dollars, and so you're showcasing, hey, I have valuables. And when you put that out there like that, these guys can very easily say, hey, that's a valuable piece. I can then fence that for 50 bucks or whatever and do whatever it is that I need to do with that 50 bucks. Stick your phone in your pocket and don't get victimized because you're flashing valuables to people. And next thing here, I want you to pay attention to the fact that this is a very typical ambush. This is kind of what we call an L-shaped ambush. Now, the one to our left is a female. She is just acting as a blocker is what she really is, which allows our attacker to kind of pull a button hook, very common, and it launches attack from a place of surprise. It just got this guy, nope, not paying attention. And all he's doing, because he's paying attention to his phone instead of his world, the first inclination he has is something is wrong, is a gun stuck in his ear. And notice as well that our bad guy has his finger on the trigger. That's a pretty significant thing. And again, our, our victim is at a crazy initiative deficit here. The other thing that having your cell phone out in public does is it robs you of attention and attention buys you time, time buys you options and initiative. He doesn't have that, so he has to orient himself. He's really bad. So he does this very natural thing, which is reach out for the gun. However, when we talk about the 5Ds plus one, one of the things that we say is, is the plus one is you gotta control the distance. And that means you gotta get close. Well, he had a natural inclination here to get away from the guy and then reach out for the gun. Well, those are exclusive things, right? So either get distance and run like heck or close that distance and get your hand on the gun. Of course, with multiple attackers, be very, very difficult. Now, I think here what happened is that one right there is where the shot broke that actually shot our victim. I, you know, I'm not positive of that, but frame rates are such that sometimes you won't see the muzzle flash. We will see another one. Uh, and, and, but in this case, I think that that was a negligent discharge. I think that actually was a, a gun went off when he didn't want it to a sympathetic squeeze. Bad guys do not follow the rules of firearm safety. They do not care about your safety. So treat them as such. And the reason I don't, you see him go back like that. And then a second shot goes off. I don't think that shot had any hope of actually hitting our intended victim here or our victim, but I think he is just now just firing kind of at random and showing that he's in charge of things. So once again, if somebody has a firearm, they pull that gun on you, expect it to be loaded, expect that they are willing to use it, and, and then that way you take the best uh, precautions there. Now, I also want you to notice our victim is still in the fight, great emotional fitness there. 
So now he's got a little bit of distance, even though he has limited mobility because he's been shot and, and he gets both hands on the gun. Okay, fine. But when we talk about that, that idea of deflect first, he's done that here, but now you got to dominate, dominate the gun, the hand with the gun, the person with the gun, because the bad guy gets a vote as well. This only happens very fleetingly because you notice here the bad guy then pulls the gun back and away. And that is a very common thing. If you just put your hands out to like push that gun away, he's going to pull it back, bring it back around and, and put you in the position that he can use it again. So dominate again. And when you don't do that, you put yourself at significant increased risk. And then we see him here just absolutely stiff arm this guy. This is like the ultimate version of the leveraging arm. And I want you to notice that a gun wielding attacker will use the leveraging arm to keep you away from his gun. A knife wielding attacker will use a leveraging arm to hold you in place to pull you in to stab you with the knife. But a gun wielding attacker will use the leveraging arm to push you off him so that you do not have a chance to take his gun away from him. And that's exactly what we saw here. I'm very glad that our, uh, our victim ended up making it and doing okay. Final thing I do want to say as they go off is that you should have your first aid kit on your person. That Stop the Bleed kit is incredibly important. We have a link in the description. You can buy one of ours or just source one yourself. Of course, I'd recommend buying one of ours because we give the money to charity that we make on that. But what we want you to see is that you have that on your person so that you can stop serious bleeding like is going to happen when you get shot in the leg. And final thing here, notice how nonchalant me... Uh, nonchalantly, our attacker wanders off. Once again, final thing, they do not think like you do. Criminals do not think like you do. So don't expect them to have your same morals. Instead, you protect yourself so that you can cover your ass.